Yeah, I'm, I'll describe a picture in Haiti. Uh, I photographed this kid, small young kid, uh, looting, carrying a piece of meat. Uh, and the picture is, was just strong. It was obvious. Uh, a lot of photographers were, they were trying to photograph there and it was very dangerous and stuff, but uh, we were photographing from our tummy because it was too scary. Uh, people didn't like us to photograph. But that picture, I actually, I saw it, I waited and I took the picture. And it just showed what the country has gotten to at that point. There was this kid and you could see in his eyes that he's scared and he's stealing a piece of meat, uh, on raw uncooked piece of meat and it did well the picture was all over the place it won the world press it, it, it got very it, it helped my career as well I'm not sure I helped the kit but uh, and I'm not sure I helped the country but it, it showed this one moment that you want to see in photojournalism I guess that this is what it's come to this is what reality looks like and it was one of those pictures that after you snapped it it brought a lot of emotion from a lot of people, so I think that's what we do. Yeah. Actually, I think my favorites are, are, are all the ones I didn't take. Um, and uh, so my, my memory is actually populated by, by the pictures I, for some reason or other, I, I didn't take. And, uh, and they're my favorites. Sometimes the favorite pictures are maybe not, not the most important pictures. Uh, one of the... It is, yeah, it is some pictures for, from Kosovo, I like it. And they, 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 were, they were really, really important. Uh, and Kosovo was also, for me, different, different, uh, and most difficult story. But uh, one of the most important picture is uh, I made is uh, basically falling of Saddam statue in the center of Baghdad after upon American survival there, and. Uh, uh, it's, it's, uh, that was a basically day after my close, very close friend Taras died in Iraq and I was not really, really concentrate on an assignment. It was basically one day after his death and more or less I shoot by reflex. I didn't really think too much what's going on. In the end, up, uh, the picture was good and published a lot. And that's it. But I really didn't feel good on those days. Well, the strange thing is, after taking pictures for 50 years, there's no question the picture I'm going to be remembered for was a picture of Monica Lewinsky embracing Bill Clinton, uh, which was the first picture that had people really understood that they had a relationship. And that picture was probably one of the most published pictures ever made. Well, one of my favorite images uh, was shot in Sarajevo in 1992, and I was working um, covering uh, uh, refugees being evacuated out of uh, out of the city of Sarajevo, out of the siege. Uh, the Serbian forces had allowed the um, uh, people to allow their children to leave on buses. And it reminded me very much of what happened in, in London during the Blitz in, um, in the Second World War. There was lines of people waiting to put their children on buses. And um, there was a woman there, a very beautiful woman, and she was holding her child, her, her little boy. He, he was very young. Um, beautifully dressed. I mean, I, I don't have children, but I think to send your child away must be one of the, the hardest things to do. Um, she was holding back her tears, and he looked confused, and uh, it, it was what I would say would be 
my kind of picture, the kind of photograph I like to shoot where I'm, I'm there very close, very simple lenses. Um, I work with Leicas and 35mm and shooting right into her face and, and even though she can't, she doesn't seem to see me. So the image is very much, you know, I have this thing, if you can see into their eyes, you can see into their soul. And um, the picture is very strong. Uh, the little boy is confused. He doesn't know what's happening. And she's trying to be brave. Um, even though she's sending her child away. The thing is that that's what I thought was happening. Um, six months ago I got a call from uh, or an email from someone in, in Australia and um, this person said uh, I know this woman she's my neighbor. So I went to Australia to make a story on her. Her name is Gordana and the little boy who is now this high is called Andre and in fact uh, she came from a very good family and was able to escape the siege. She got on the bus with the child. So I made a little story about her, about her life, what happened after that first moment when I, when I saw her that morning. I mean, she's been in my life for 13 years and uh, people are more, still moved by the image. And I was able to go and see her and complete the circle for me. Uh, she told me her story um, and she told me what happened to her when she left and she told me that she's never been back to Sarajevo. It was a, a very emotional um, uh, thing to do. She doesn't like the picture at all. Uh, she thinks that uh, it shows her in a, in a way that uh, she wanted to be seen to be strong and she didn't want anyone to see her tears. So uh, even though she knew the photograph, she decided not to contact me um, because she, she felt that I exposed her at that time, um, but she respected the fact that I caught the moment. Yeah, well, the, really the picture which always comes to me as my favorite one is a photograph I took in Iran in 1983 during the Iran-Iraq war. Well, the picture itself is very incredible. You have this group of mullahs, Iranian mullahs, who are visiting the front line. And the whole sky is covered with the black uh, smoke, which was the uh, oil ri refineries burning. And with a special light because of the time of the picture and the unnatural and surrealistic situation. Uh, that's, that's the picture I really like. And it's plus for me, it's personal also because it shows the destruction of my country and this, the, the political situation there. There was a photograph I took in Iraq in the slum of Sadr City. We were following a coffin back um, during a funeral pr procession. They bring the coffin to the women to say goodbye before they, the men bury the body. We followed the coffin back into a home, and there was no electricity. The fighting had stopped uh, that morning, um, which gave the residents a chance to bury the bodies that had been killed overnight. So we thought it was safe. We went to this home, and uh, in this home, it was pitch black. It was a tiny hovel of a home in this slum, and uh, in this pitch black room, um, as the women are wailing, the bombing began again around us, and it was like 360 degrees around this home, and I was in there with this family in this dark, confined space. And I took a photograph that, um, I like the photograph, but it's also the memory of that moment and the, um, it's the, the association with this family. I, I've never been, I've never had to live in a situation like this family, hopefully I never will. I only come and go out of these places and the violence in this family is absolutely inescapable, inescapable. And I felt it in a very tangible way in that moment, what these children are living with, what these families are living with. And otherwise I have a, a certain distance from it because I can come and go in this family, in their home, as they're burying someone is experiencing it in a continuous, never-ending time span. That's the photograph.
If I have to pick one now that is in this exhibit, it would be a picture in Chechnya where I've been. For me, a extremely dangerous situation, the real extreme of war, very, very dangerous, a lot of bombardments, etc., etc. On one day, it was, I think, yes, yeah, it was January, and there was snow falling, these kind of light flakes. And I walk into a courtyard, and in the snow I see a man with a black jacket and a black cap on, and he's holding a crying woman, which later turned out to be his wife. And to the right of them, in the truck, were all their belongings, and the man was comforting his wife, because they had to leave their house and whatever, you know, they couldn't take. I think it's a key picture for me because because it shows that whatever happens for me, it's for me it's very important to see the to try and find, you know, it finds that people still you know can surmount all the disasters that arrive them and and can can remain human and it it's very key for me to to keep recognizing these things and I think that the man comforting his wife is also a solace for me, it's a comfort for me seeing that. They remain human, they're not, you know, if you're stressed you can start screaming and shouting at each other. No, this man is holding his crying wife, he's comforting her and it's, it's a picture that, that gives me solace. And um, I've seen 17 years of conflict all over the world and you could have, you know, you could have every reason to be cynical, uh, but I'm not and I actually I refuse to be. I'm looking for exactly that human emotion or human strength or pictures that show that people try to carry on with their lives despite everything that has happened to them.